An updated proposal for a thrill ride at the stratosphere goes before the planning commission. Hear what supporters had to say. Another chapter unfolds in the medical malpractice insurance crisis, and this time it could affect unborn children in Nevada. Plus, your home may be worth more than you bought it for. Channel 8 on your side, consumer editor Michael Geeser takes a closer look at the Valley's appreciating home values. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning starts now. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning with Charlotte Evans, Casey Smith, and Neighborhood Weather with Sherry Swenz. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, the news leader. Time right now is 5.30. Good morning. It's Friday, May 10th. I'm Charlotte Evans. And I'm Casey Smith. Thanks for joining us. It's 71 degrees out there already. Mark is going to have the full neighborhood weather forecast in just a moment in about 10 minutes here on Channel 8. But first, our top story this half hour. Hundreds of people turned out last night at the Planning Commission meeting to express their opinion on the Stratosphere's new proposed thrill ride. Stratosphere attorneys took up to three hours using charts, posters, and close to 100 supporters to promote the project. The ride would be a 600-foot roller coaster that would go up to 90 miles an hour. Supporters claim the ride would bring about 700,000 tourists to the area and hundreds of jobs as well. And when people are losing jobs at other major resorts throughout the valley and people are being laid off, Mr. Icon is saying, I'm going forward and I'm going to create jobs and work for people. Now, in the end, the commission cast a vote. It was a two-to-two -two tie. The proposal now goes to the city council June 5th. The testimony on the proposed Stratosphere roller coaster delayed a hearing about a new hotel casino, which is planned right off the Strip. News One's Dana Drake has that story. And the casino, we're standing right where the casino will be. Andrew Fonfa has owned these five acres just off the Las Vegas Strip since 1987. On one side is busy Sahara Avenue. On the other is Fairfield Avenue, the road that also leads to the Stratosphere. The property borders a rundown residential area and a gas station. There are four small aging buildings on the property that house four international restaurants and a wedding chapel. But this scene is all about to change if Fonfa gets his way. This will be the first project that actually joins the city with the county. Fonfa will build a 200-room, nine-story hotel and plans to have Hilton manage it. In addition to the Hilton Garden Inn, there will be a 40,000-square-foot casino, uh, which will include a lounge, bar, uh, several restaurants. The uh, casino lounge uh, will not be a Hilton uh, property. That will be owned separately. Fonfa says his project will be considered part of the city's downtown redevelopment area. Fonfa says the unstable economy means he's moving cautiously. But with nearby plans for Steve Wynn's La Rev and Turnberry Place, he says the time to build is now. We think that this project will, uh, will be a real catalyst for this area. Dana Drake, News One. If the project is approved, it will go to the city council for a vote. If they say okay, then groundbreaking could be held next winter. 533, the local woman who helped put fugitive and double murder suspect T.J. Weber behind bars will get the Secret Witness Award. Weber's charged with killing his girlfriend and her 15-year-old son. Darcy Spaulding noticed something suspicious in the trailer next door, so she called the cops which resulted in his apprehension and capture and an end to a, a reign of fear that was in our community about his whereabouts and his possible uh, next criminal act. Spaulding will get a plaque that Jerry Keller was just holding and $2,000 from the Secret Witness Program. More disturbing information is coming out about a double murder that was discovered last month. Two young men were found dead near a junkyard close to Lamb and Owens back in April. Police now believe that two other men, Manuel Horta and Edo Vijes Pena, killed the two men by tying them up, putting them into luggage, and then drowning them. Drugs are believed to be the motive. Wednesday, prosecutors filed murder charges against Horta and Pena. Metro police say that April was an especially deadly month. They investigated 19 homicides in April. Two of them uh, involved murder suspect Timmy Weber and the biker shooting in Laughlin. April saw the third highest monthly murder toll in Metro history. The 19 that you reference is the number of individual victims, not the number of individual acts. So, for example, Timmy Weber, two murders, one act. Uh, Laughlin, three murders, one particular event. Metro recorded the most homicides ever in one month, 24, in July of 1997. Turning to the war on terrorism this morning at 535, the House passed a $383 billion military spending bill. Now, this bill is said to represent the biggest boost in Pentagon spending since the Vietnam War. 
The Senate is now working on its version of, the, of a defense spending bill. More than 250 suspected Islamic militants were arrested yesterday in Pakistan as investigators looked for links between al-Qaeda terrorists and a bombing that killed 14 people. U.S. officials say an Afghan warlord remains a threat to American forces. He was the target of a CIA missile strike yesterday. For a week now, 1,000 British troops have been sweeping through a mountainous area in southeastern Afghanistan and have not reported any contact with the enemy, but they did uncover the largest cache of ammunition and weapons yet, and evidence al-Qaeda was there not too long ago. And early this morning in the southern Israeli city of Beersheba, a bomb exploded near a bank. At least four people were hurt. This, as the last holdouts in Bethlehem's Church of the Nativity have come out of the church compound, several helmeted Israeli policemen entered the shrine today, escorting out 10 foreign activists. The standoff ended last night. The medical malpractice insurance crisis has hit yet another section of our medical field. Coming up in about 10 minutes on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, how the crisis is affecting health care for expectant mothers. Another live look of the morning, as you can tell from our mild shaky cam <laughs> it's still windy out there it is 71 degrees though at 536 your full neighborhood weather forecast with mark fister straight ahead guess what today is charlotte what is it well you're reading it so you know friday it's the anniversary of driving the golden spike 1869. You know what yeah, that was, Mark, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. Union Pacific. The and the it was the first punk rocker. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the Union Pacific and Central Pacific Railways met at Promontory Point, Utah. Just I've up the road. Been there. That's a great, you know, if you want to go on a family road trip, that's something to do. Yes. Today is <laughs> National Small Business Day. And it's also. And that would be Mark's Day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, small, small businesses. businesses employ over 90% of the people in this country. That's right. That's, there that's you go. entirely correct. Uh -huh. And it's also. As Mark gets his chair set up here. Yes. Trust your intuition day. Always yeah, trust your intuition. Should have stayed in bed. In bed. Should have stayed in bed. Can tomorrow hey. though. All no, morning. No, no, I can't. Getting up early tomorrow morning again. Oh, that's right. You're going out there? Going up to Rachel. Rachel Days 2002. Cool. Yes. You've never been to Rachel. No, You've I been have to been Rachel. There. I'm there you go. Rachel's a great little town located north of Area 51. Mm -hmm. Um it was, shoo, can't talk about it. Right. Best thing about it is there's a place there, if you're new to the valley, it's called the Little Ale -E Inn. Yeah. Alien. And Alien. the big rumors right. yeah. and the big beliefs, there's the UFO capital of the world and all the UFOs are centered there. Trust me, I've been there like once or twice. There are grown people in the cafe wearing Star Trek uniforms. Really? Yeah, I'm serious. Okay, I'm in. All uh, right, you know, I'm I mean. Take a look outside. I mean, it's it, it's a great place, and and the guys who run the little A L E Inn mm -hmm. and hotel. And there we go. The whole it's crew, great. It's great. The whole crew <laughs> yeah. right um, nonner, nonner. Live long, there prosper. Go. May the farce be with you. Uh, these are some of the low temperatures around the valley. This one. It is a great place. The little A L E Inn. Joe, I think the guy. Joe, and God, I forget his wife's name, but. Uh, wonderful people, and they'll remind me that I forgot their name when I see them tomorrow because they're watching right now. Um, they've taken two double wides, put them together, and made the little Ailey Inn. And then at, at N Hotel, which are single wides in the oh, back. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. very Small charming, though. Charming. 74 charming. out of East Cary. We're looking at 68 this morning out at Warm Springs, 71 at Water Street, 61 at Red Rock, 74 at Laughlin, 64 at Searchlight. There's going to be a parade there tomorrow. I'll take a look at satellite picture. I'll get started early in the morning. Best one, hot dogs for a buck. 54 right now up in Chicago. Looking at 72 in Louisville. Uh, look for a high temperature, 90 in New Orleans today, 85 here in the valley. It'll be sunny and windy today. We're always seeing the winds kick up out of the southwest, 20 to 30 miles an hour. Gust around 40 by this afternoon. Tonight, 60, clear and windy out of the southwest, 20 to 30. 61 is a normal overnight low, so we're in the ballpark. And for the week ahead, windy to, uh, today, breezy early on tomorrow. Great day, though, in Rachel. 80 on Saturday, then 84 on Sunday, 90 on Monday, 91, 94, 92. I'll tell you more about what I know about Rachel coming up later on this morning. Did, I'm not an expert, but I know a few things. Did they get our signal? Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. They get it from the planet Zoltar. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Art. It's not jammed by you know what. <laughs> All morning on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, we're giving away pairs of tickets to see Frank Sinatra Jr. in concert at the MGM this weekend. We gave away one pair a couple minutes ago. Congratulations to Eve Zabarte. Three more pairs are still up for grabs this morning, so keep it tuned to, actually, is it Eve or Ava? Ava. Ava, Ava okay. Zabarte. Congratulations. Thank you so much for calling in. and. Uh, 
more opportunities are coming up. That's right. We are going to have another giveaway. A look at the morning's top headlines is also straight ahead here on Stanley and Eyewitness News this morning. Including the very latest on yesterday's deadly carjacking. But first... I'm Alexis Christophorus. Mortgage rates inch higher and investors try to get back that rallying feeling. Details in today's CBS Market Watch. And on this day in 1995, Terry Nichols was formally charged with the bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building. Nichols was charged with participating in the malicious damage and destruction of that building. It's 545 now. Our top local stories this morning. Las Vegas high school students are mourning the loss of one of their classmates this morning. The 17-year-old girl died when the car she and four other girls were in hit a light pole yesterday morning. Three of the girls are on critical condition this morning. The fourth is in fair. Another teenager is in the hospital, but he's accused of causing a string of violent events, including shooting a trooper and killing two innocent people. Police say 16-year-old Giles Manley tried to burglarize Ruth Fife Elementary School Wednesday night. Police also say school custodian Isaac Perez caught him in the act, and that's when Manley carjacked Perez's car with Perez in it. That led to a string of events that left Perez and another man dead and an NHP trooper shot in the foot. A deadlocked vote at the Planning Commission as a proposed new thrill ride at the Stratosphere was open for public opinion. Hundreds of people turned out to support and oppose the proposal. In the end, the commission cast a tie vote two to two. The thrill ride would be a 600-foot roller coaster reaching speeds of up to 90 miles an hour. The proposal now goes to the City Council June 5th. In this morning's Eye on Health, many pregnant women who need prenatal care say they're being turned away from some local OBGYN offices because doctors say they can't afford to take on new patients. It's the latest apparent effect of the medical malpractice insurance crisis. Eyewitness News reporter Andrea Bond has more on how doctors, the community, and our governor are responding. For dozens of pregnant women in the valley, the happiest time of their lives has turned into the scariest. One by one, OBGYNs are telling them they can't afford to accept new patients. It's a situation the governor says is getting his full attention. Oh, absolutely. I will exercise every ounce of emergency authority I have to see that every woman who is pregnant has the proper protection. Governor Gwynn says he's still exploring what action the state can take. In the meantime, women who can't get care from OBGYNs are turning to alternatives like midwives. Corinne Flatt got a call from one desperate mother-to-be just this morning. And her first question was, uh, are you taking new OB? And my answer was yes. Flatt has delivered 51 babies here in Las Vegas. She says midwifery can be an option for women with low-risk pregnancies. They don't have to give birth in the emergency room. Midwifery is a good option. They can get excellent prenatal care and good care from midwives if they can't find a doctor. But midwives admit that their care isn't for everyone. And doctors warn that some pregnancies require more expertise than midwives can offer. They've had certain complications in the past, certain medical problems. The baby has certain problems that they just cannot go see a midwife. They will need an obstetrician. So while pregnant women may have another option for giving birth, Doctors and midwives agree Nevada needs a long-term medical solution. Andrea Bond, Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning. The governor says tort reform will be closely examined in the next legislative session. Meantime, some recent figures released by the Clark County OBGYN Society state that 78% of local OBGYNs have indicated if there's no long-term solution, they will have to leave the state of Nevada. Casey? Thanks, Charlotte. 548 now, day four of the Arthur Anderson trial saw two of the firm's partners try to further distance themselves from Enron and former Anderson auditor David Duncan. Duncan himself made a brief appearance in a Houston federal courtroom yesterday, but not to testify. The former chief Enron auditor was fired from the firm earlier this year. Duncan isn't expected to testify until Monday. If convicted, Arthur Anderson could face up to a $500,000 fine and five years probation. Some losses on Wall Street yesterday as investors brace themselves for more earnings news today. Here's Alexis Christophorus with more in today's Market Watch report. What the market giveth, the market taketh away. As many had predicted, stocks gave back some of Wednesday's stunning rally. On the heels of a 300-plus rally Wednesday, the Dow gave back 104 points yesterday. The Nasdaq fell back 45, led lower by tech stocks. 
Cisco Systems exhaled a bit after igniting Wednesday's big rally, giving back about 3% of a 24% gain. Rainy weather throughout much of the country put a damper on retail sales in the month of April. It was the discounters that suffered the most. Sales at Walmart rose less than expected. Among the bright spots, clothing chains like JCPenney and The Gap. They said sales fell, but less than expected. WorldCom had its debt rating cut to junk bond status. Federal regulators are investigating WorldCom's accounting and loans to its former chairman. In a statement, WorldCom said the downgrade would have no impact on its financial status or existing credit agreements. Mortgage rates are inching higher, but with rates overall remaining near historic lows, home buyers are out in record numbers as the prime spring season progresses. Freddie Mac says the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.79% this week. You can track all the pre-market action at cbs.marketwatch.com. At the NASDAQ, I'm Alexis Christophorus in New York. The value of your house could be going up. When Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning returns, Channel 8 on your side consumer editor Michael Geeser takes a look at the rising value of homes in the Las Vegas Valley. And still ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning at 6, Good Kids Gone Bad, a closer look at what drives teenagers to violence. It's 5.50. We'll be right back. Time right now is 5.53. For years, the average annual appreciation rate for new homes in the Valley stayed at about 2%, but now that is changing. Channel 8 on your side, consumer editor Michael Geeser is here with some newly released statistics. Good morning. The complaint from new homeowners in the Valley has always been there's no resale value, but that's changing. According to Remax, a realty group, homes in the Valley are now appreciating at a rate of nearly 5%. Once again, the number one selling zip code in the Valley last year was 89014. That essentially is all of Green Valley. The average price of a home sold there was more than $187,000. That area was followed by the 89108 zip code. That area is near Rancho in Washington. Remax says the average price of a home there was more than $124,000. I'm not sure if this is what your mom has in mind for a Mother's Day gift, but it's a deal. Kinko's is offering a 40% discount off just about everything in the store with an online coupon. Just go to KLASTV.com and we'll link you to the website where you can print the coupon. The offer only lasts until Sunday, May 12th. Probably not the best Mother's Day gift, but hey, 40% is 40%. Michael Geeser, Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning. Today at 4, Michael will have the skinny on exercise balls. Do they work? Do they really trim the waistline, Casey? I don't know. I, you know the skinny, great. The skinny on exercise balls. A hearing today is going to examine whether a key player should be kicked off the Binion appeal. And still ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, find out why prosecutors want Rick Tavish's attorney off the case. What's the skinny on the weather? Well, it's going to be windy. Oh. Yeah, windy today, a high temperature, 85, breeze and tomorrow, a high of 80. Get back into the 90s for the week ahead. Uh, all in all, hey, good forecast once we get past the wind today. Darren? Mark, we're looking pretty good out there. Here's a live shot of the Spaghetti Bowl. You can see I-15, US-95, moving at a very good pace. We'll have details on your morning commute coming up as Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning continues. We'll be right back. Coming up next on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, from stealing school buses to murder, teens were accused in a number of crimes over the last week. A look at what drives them to hurt others. Plus, the latest information on yesterday's deadly carjacking crime spree. Find out how the whole thing started and ended. And imagine never having to wait in line at the gas pump again. Meet some Las Vegas residents with electric cars. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning starts now. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning with Charlotte Evans, Casey Smith, and Neighborhood Weather with Sherry Swensk. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning, the news leader. Good morning. It's almost 6 o'clock on Friday, May 10th. I'm Charlotte Evans. And I'm Casey Smith. It is 71 degrees out there already, which is kind of a nice thing. Mark Fister will be along with your full neighborhood weather forecast in about 15 minutes. We do want to go to our top story first this morning. Absolutely. Las Vegas high school students are more loss of one of their classmates this morning. A 17-year-old girl died when the car she and four other girls were in hit a light pole yesterday morning. Three of the girls are in critical condition at this hour. The fourth is in fair. Police say the driver was speeding when she lost control of the vehicle and slid sideways into a light pole. 
The pole split the car in half. Parents of the girls who survived the crash say their daughters are lucky to be alive. You know, she broke her pelvis, every ankle, femur, clavicle. I mean, she's just, you know, completely busted up. She just, uh, she's scared to death. One of the girls had surgery yesterday to amputate one of her legs. We have new information this morning about the teenager accused of causing a string of violent events, including shooting a highway patrol trooper and killing two innocent people. Police say 16-year-old Giles Manley tried to burglarize Ruth Fife Elementary School Wednesday night. Instead, police say he was confronted by the school custodian, Isaac Perez, who police say he then carjacked. Police say Manley shot and killed Perez when Perez crashed his Lincoln to get the attention of a nearby highway patrol trooper. After a shootout with the trooper, Manley ran off and carjacked another vehicle, according to police. They say he then led them on a high-speed chase, which ended when he plowed into another car and killed that car's driver. Prosecutors are charging Giles Manley as an adult with murder and attempted murder. He's in fair condition at UMC. Two of the three prompt teenagers accused in a plot to blow up their high school are expected in court today. Police say the two conspired with 15-year-old Freddie Bludgett in a plot to blow up propane tanks near the school. The plan fell apart when Bludgett allegedly hijacked an Nye County school bus and drove it to California. Bludgett's first court appearance is scheduled for next week. Cases like that in this week's alleged carjackings by a 16-year-old have people asking, what's up with some of our teens today? Many are wondering what leads any young people to commit acts like that. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning reporter John Summers joined us in the studio with some answers to that. Good morning, John. Yeah, good morning. It's incredible some of the things we're talking about, yeah. some of these crimes that these teenagers have been accused of. Bus jackings, car jackings, pipe bombs, even murders are just some of the things, some of the crimes allegedly committed by young people in just the last couple of weeks. It's a situation that has a lot of people scratching their heads and looking for solutions on how to keep another local youth from turning on society. As a child psychologist who has worked in the county juvenile detention center for nearly 30 years, Dave DeMarco has become familiar with what can drive a teen to commit crimes. Social issues appear to top the list. DeMarco says the 3,900 children currently in the system often talk about their social problems at school and at home. That's the case with Giles Manley, the 16-year-old who's charged with two carjackings, murder, and attempted murder of a police officer. He attended and eventually was kicked out of Jefferson Opportunity School, which offers programs to students who have displayed behavioral and social problems. In some situations, drugs and alcohol can also be factors. But the source can even be biological in the form of medical conditions. Problems one psychologist says sometimes aren't discovered until the teens are behind bars. One is bipolar disorder, which used to be called manic depressive disorder. Another is the early onset of schizophrenic thinking, a thought disorder. And untreated or undertreated uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's also the issue of brain development. According to Clark, the adolescent brain continues developing until the age of 22. That development, he says, could include important areas of the brain that control inhibitions and logic. Because of that, Clark says young people often don't know how to make right decisions. Dr. Clark says there are some warning signs to look for in your teen that may indicate mental instability. If the child comes up with what may be considered as way out ideas like what he or she could do to finally change the world, another sign is blatant hatred against a social agency like school, teacher, or school rules. Seclusion is also another sign if your child doesn't participate in any school functions or interact with any peers. DeMarco also says that minors who are diagnosed with mental problems while in the juvenile detention center often leave with prescriptions for their conditions. But Dr. Clark insists that before they get to that point, parents need to be the first ones to diagnose some of these problems. He's saying that you really do need to pay attention and take seriously the things that your, that your kids are saying. We'll have more coming up at 630. It's also important to point out that the kids that are doing these alleged bad deeds are a mere fraction of the kids out there. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This certainly isn't one of those things where you can go out and say, oh, you know. Kids these days. <laughs> kids yeah. these days, which <laughs> is something that every generation yeah, seems to say. Are. But it does. it is interesting, this rash of okay. alleged teen, teen crimes that we're yeah. seeing over the last couple of weeks. It is coming in, in a wave, it seems. It is. But then adults certainly are showing they don't always have good judgment uh, either. You know, you're right. We've actually seen that in the adult world as well. At all the homicides that we've seen mm -hmm. this year alone so far. Exactly. Thanks, John. Sure. The Henderson priest who is accused of sexually abusing young men and taking pornographic pictures of them does not want his next hearing to be public. An attorney for Father Mark Roberts 
filed a motion this week to try to keep his preliminary hearing private. Father Roberts used to be a priest at St. Peter the Apostle Church on Boulder Highway before he was removed. Lawyers for the media are fighting that motion. They say there's no reason for the hearing to be closed to the public. There is nothing that cannot or should not be said in a courtroom. A courtroom is the one place uh, where we need absolute honesty and absolute candor. And so are they embarrassing? Maybe. But, you know, the bottom line is if we're going to do justice in our system, so what? The boys making the allegations are planning to testify in open court. Father Roberts will be back in court at the end of the month. Defense attorneys for a Las Vegas man accused of murdering his girlfriend and her son last month want a closed-door grand jury hearing in, in, in another county. The Las Vegas Sun is reporting that attorneys representing Tim Weber filed that motion late yesterday. Weber's accused of murdering his girlfriend, Kim Gautier, and her son, a 15-year-old named Anthony, at their home in April. Weber's also charged with raping Gautier's 14-year-old daughter. Defense attorneys say with so much publicity here, a local grand jury may feel compelled to return an indictment. 605, the biker charged with murder at the melee at Harris and Laughlin is out of jail now. Calvin Schaefer was released on a $250,000 bond yesterday. Schaefer is a member of Hell's Angels and is charged with murder and attempted murder for the shooting spree that left three people dead at the Laughlin Casino. Schaefer's preliminary hearing is July 25th. Accusations against an attorney for a man convicted of killing a local casino executive will head to court today. Prosecutors want to disqualify Rick Tabish's attorney, Tony Serra. They say the attorney, Serra, lied on his application to practice in the state of Nevada, and they claim that Serra ran into trouble with the IRS. Tabish is serving time for killing multimillionaire Ted Binion. 606, in national and international news this morning, the college student accused of planning Pipe bombs in five states will be taken to Iowa today for an initial court appearance. Luke Helder is in jail in Reno. He got to see his parents there for about a half hour yesterday. Helder faces federal charges in connection with 18 pipe bombs found in mailboxes in Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, and Texas. Police say Helder told an undercover cop he was trying to make a smiley face pattern with the bombs on a map. The jury in the murder trial of Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel has heard from a friend of victim Martha Moxley. The friend read entries from Moxley's diary as prosecutors detailed the days before the Greenwich, Connecticut teenager was beaten to death. Skakel is charged with killing Moxley in 1975 when both were 15 years old. And another terror bombing in Israel. It happened near a bank in the southern city of Beersheba this morning. At least four people were hurt. This as the last holdouts in Bethlehem's Church of the Nativity have come out of the church compound. Several helmeted Israeli policemen entered the shrine today, escorted out 10 foreign activists and the standoff officially ended last night. And also in the war on terrorism this morning, the House passed a $383 billion military spending bill. This House bill is said to represent the biggest boost in Pentagon spending since the Vietnam War. The Senate is now working on a similar version of a defense spending bill. More than 250 suspected Islamic militants were arrested yesterday in Pakistan as investigators looked for links between al-Qaeda and a bombing which killed 14 people. U.S. officials say an Afghan warlord remains a threat to American forces. He was the target of a CIA missile strike yesterday. For a week now, a thousand British troops have been sweeping through a mountainous region in southeastern Afghanistan, and they have not had any contact with the enemy, they say. But they did uncover the largest cache of ammunition to date and evidence that al-Qaeda was there recently. 608, Friday morning. How's the Friday commute, Darren? So far, so good. Off to a great start on this Friday morning, I'm happy to say. We have uh, no reports of any major problems out there on the expressways. Let's go ahead and take a look at the US 95 around the Rainbow Curve, courtesy of Molaski Family Properties. And you can see traffic moving at a very good pace right now in both directions. We have one accident to watch out for. If you're traveling on Las Vegas Boulevard southbound just before Flamingo, we have an accident reported there. Let's go ahead and take a look at I-15. So we're shaping up there near the Desert Inn. Uh, interchange. We're looking good, as you can see here from our Rio cam. I-15 in both directions from the Spaghetti Bowl all the way down to the 215 Beltway. No reports of any problems. So, so far, so good out there on the expressways. That's a live look at your eye on traffic. Charlotte, Casey? All right. Thanks, Tim. Summertime gas prices are already showing up the pump. But now Congress has some fuel to fight the rising rates across the country. The full story in about five minutes on Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning. And in about ten minutes, electric cars closer look at the newest alternative fuel cars. Keep it here. Channel 8 Eyewitness News this morning. We'll be right back. 609, 71 degrees.
Through all the years, in all of the great hotels, with all of the wonderful shows, one entertainment experience stands out above all others. One show breaks every Las Vegas attendance record and then does it again and again, night after night. The one show that you can actually experience for yourself. So be a part of history the next time that Siegfried and Roy set foot on the stage at the Mirage.